What's up mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm back from my hiatus to talk about aseptic technique with liquid culture. So when you receive a liquid culture, um, you can get these from our Etsy shop or a number of different reliable vendors in the industry. But basically what you're receiving is a starter culture that is sterile with only mushroom mycelium. So that's the start of the mushrooms that you're going to be growing. Now, sometimes these will come with these alcohol wipes, but usually they'll come in a, a package like this with a sterile syringe and a sterile needle. So a couple things that you want to observe is that the culture itself looks pretty clear. Um, if it's weirdly colored or has like dark green in it, that's pretty concerning. It's different from a spore syringe. So spores will be like little black particles or little white particles that you'll see floating in the culture. So this is our pink oyster culture. It looks really healthy. Some of the, the questions that I get a lot are how much mycelium needs to be in this liquid culture to have a successful grow. So the answer is that there only has to be one viable cell. So sometimes you might get um, liquid cultures like with lion's mane where it's very sparse and faint, but as long as you follow these processes correctly, you should be able to expand that liquid culture pretty quickly and then you can continue on with your cultivation. So after you get your liquid culture, there's a few different things that you can do with that liquid culture. And that's where aseptic technique comes into play. So what is aseptic technique? Aseptic technique is aseptic, which means without life, and then technique, which is a system to achieve that goal. So it's the system that you use to achieve zero life process. So what that means is that when you're working in a mushroom lab, you don't want to transfer any living viable cells other than the mushroom that you're trying to grow. Oftentimes, um, you'll, you'll be able to transfer living bacteria from your hand or from your breath or even from the ambient air. So right now, it's the middle of winter in Colorado. It's the perfect time to, to practice growing or this is when I do my breeding because there's much less contaminants in the air because it just snowed, all the plants have died back, the, the ambient spore load in the air is very low. However, in the springtime and the summer and the fall when outside all of that foliage gets disturbed and the spore loads in the air are higher, you can get more contamination from the ambient air. So that's why I have this flow hood behind me this pushes clean air through a filter and it helps to pre prevent contamination. Now, the most important way to mitigate contamination is to use aseptic technique. So that means that you're not touching your, your skin to the materials that you're using, you're wiping down with disinfectants, you're, you're avoiding introducing any living organism into the system. Liquid cultures, are um, an amazing method to prevent contamination as long as you do it correctly. So like I said earlier, there's a few different things that you can do with a liquid culture when you receive it. So the first thing I would recommend doing is just spraying it down with some isopropyl. So I've got my alcohol here and then that way when you're taking your, your liquid culture from the male into your laboratory, you have a clean system. So I use gloves and a flow hood to prepare these liquid cultures so I know they're sterile once they come out of this bag. Um, one problem that some people have is if you spray off the, 
the actual syringe directly, you can wipe that label off. So be careful not to spray alcohol on these labels. I may upgrade to some fancier lab labels, but in the meantime, I'm just using these printed labels. So be careful that you don't wipe those off. Um, it's not the end of the world. If you do that, you can just label them yourself, but it is a heads up. When you have your liquid culture and your, your workstation is set up, you can either inoculate a Petri dish, which is a growing medium for mushrooms. So this is a, a malt extract auger Petri dish, and you can put a couple drops on the Petri dish while making sure that you don't touch that needle. So that's the most important part receiving and using this liquid culture is to not touch the sterile needle. So I'll show you how to do that really quickly. Um, so I often give it a nice shake or I have a vortexer over there. You can stir it up really easily with a vortexer, especially if you have like lion's mane that it will often clump in the bottom here. So make sure that you really shake that up. And then with these needles, they're designed that you can open them without touching the tip. So basically you'll take off this cap and then you can crack open this needle and use the lure lock to screw on that, that needle tip and I'm not touching that sterile needle. So now I'm going to carefully unsheath that needle and put maybe like one or two drops right in the middle of that Petri dish. So you wanna aim for the middle because that, that way you have the most circumference for that mycelium to grow and fully colonize that dish. A couple things to watch out for when you're putting your liquid culture onto an auger dish is that you wanna make sure your fingers don't get near the edge of that dish. I have an example here of what might happen. So you can see these molds starting to form on the edge of the Petri dish. So that doesn't mean that this liquid culture was dirty. What it means is that when I inoculated that liquid culture, probably my pinky or maybe my thumb got over the edge of that dish and it sleuthed off some, it looks like some penicillium spores onto that dish and it started to grow. Now that's not the end of the world. I'll show you guys in the next video on how to isolate that clean mycelium, but it is something to watch out for. So ideally you will just have a clean Petri dish with white mycelium. I have a bunch in this incubator that I could show you guys. So this is a Telluride coral tooth that was a sterile liquid culture verified on agar. So you notice that there's a little bit of a gap here. So I know that there's nothing growing behind it and it's nice and white and fluffy and it's starting to form these nodules, which is an indication of a heresium species most likely. But I know for a fact that it's a, it's a coral tooth mushroom because I found it in Telluride and I'll be releasing some liquid cultures very soon with the Telluride coral tooth. Okay, so that is putting a liquid culture onto an auger Petri dish. So reasons why you might do that is just to verify that it's not contaminated. Um, what a contaminated plate would look like is that it would be completely covered in the area that you injected that liquid culture. So this is a, a old Namico. It got infected with Trichoderma. That's that green mold. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's a beautiful green mold, but it's the bane of mushrooms because that will rip through a substrate very quickly. So I have that Namico liquid culture and you can see there are some weird discolorations in that liquid culture. So that's often a giveaway that it's contaminated. So you can see there's some green blotches, probably that trichoderma that's growing in there. Um, but sometimes you can't tell 
if a liquid culture is contaminated. So this is an agaricus species. Um, it looks clean, but it's often a good idea to test on agar so you verify if it's clean or not, otherwise you're not gonna know. So the next thing you can do with a liquid culture after receiving it is to expand into a bigger liquid culture. So if you haven't seen my video on how to make liquid cultures, go check that one out. But basically it's just a, a sugar water solution that has been sterilized. And then you can use the mycology lids on our Etsy, um, which have an injection port and a syringe filter. So this allows for gas exchange and this prevents any contaminants other than the mycelium from getting into the, the liquid media. So all you would do is use an alcohol wipe or what I do is I just spray a couple drops of isopropyl on there. And then I would just take my liquid culture. So you don't want anything growing in here. This would be a clean, sterile liquid culture that I'd be using. But essentially you just take your needle inject it into the liquid culture port, and then you just inject your liquid culture. Now, if you put two liquid cultures together in the same media bottle, they're gonna compete for nutrients, you're gonna get a big mess. Sometimes people think that you can breed mushrooms that way, but you have to use haploid cultures. So right now I kind of just ruined that jar, but I'm gonna be making a fresh batch um, right after this video anyway, so I don't mind doing that. So once you inject that liquid culture into a fresh batch, make sure that it's cool before you do that. Oftentimes I'll jump the gun and I'll end up with something like this. So I injected my, um, my oyster mycelium when the liquid was still too warm. So it ended up killing that mycelium. So when I put it onto agar, it had these weird like blotchiness to it, which is just dead mycelium everywhere. And it ended up not growing. So that's one thing to watch out for when you're injecting into a new liquid culture batch. So these are all troubleshooting things that I'm teaching you guys so that when you get my liquid cultures in the mail, you'll be able to use them correctly. All right, so the third way and the way that I recommend using liquid cultures is to use them in a spawn bag. So we have grain spawn here. Um, it's been sterilized in a pressure cooker and cooled. Once again, you have to wait until it's cool. There's an injection port here, which is the same as the injection port on the, the media bottles so that you can just inject the needle into this um, grain spawn. And after about two weeks with a healthy liquid culture, you should have something that looks like this. So it's all white, healthy grain spawn. This one's a little bit too far. I had it in the fridge for a few weeks and you can see the pins already starting to form on here. This is a very rigorous oyster mushroom, our blue falcon. But this is ideally what it should look like after about two weeks in the, uh, the incubator or just at room temperature in your lab. Now, if you don't see that white growth, there could be a numerous factors. It, it could have been too hot. Um, you could have had some trichoderma. So this is actually a contaminated green spawn bag that I was hiding from you guys. But there's some trichoderma that's starting to grow and it looks like a grainy green mold. So you're gonna have to discard this. It's not worth recooking because that trichoderma is just gonna come back. So if you wanna see how I prepare my grain spawn, I have a video on that as well. I won't get into that. This one is just about how to use your liquid cultures properly. So once you use them, and if you have a little bit remaining, you can always store them at room temperature like I have behind me. One of the problems with that is that they'll continue to grow and metabolize. Like this lion's mane from about four years ago has turned this amber color. It's probably still viable, 
but those weird metabolites could affect your growth rates. So I often suggest just storing them in the refrigerator in a jar like this. So you can put them in a jar upright in the fridge and they'll last for a few years like this. Um, it's even better to keep them in a baggie so that no moisture will get into that plunger because that could lead to contamination. Um, but that's usually how I store them. Other problems that can occur. So if you got one of our mycology lids and you've used it 10 or 12 or 15 times, you might start to see some holes forming on that injection port. So I'll put a link for replacement injection ports here, but you're gonna wanna make sure that that injection port is always completely sealed because it's gonna allow for air and potentially contamination to get in there. So that's another big problem that I see is people overuse the injection ports. Um, so another solution to all of this is the media extraction cap. So I have a video on this as well that goes really into detail, but essentially the idea is that you're eliminating that injection port and you're replacing it with a lure lock like on the syringe itself. So this setup has this check valve, which prevents any contaminants from getting back into the system. It has the syringe filter, so it allows for gas exchange. And then it has this nice little cap on here. I got this one from Lion's Mane in Denver, but I noticed that there's a few different vendors now that are selling um, replicas of this or very similar models. So a lot of people will use the IV clips, which are nice because um, the check valves can get plugged up with mycelium and they're hard to clean. But if you're using the IV, just be careful that you don't disengage or de-plunge your liquid culture back into the system because that could introduce contaminants from the tip where you're screwing that looter lock. So I like the check valves just because they're a little more safe but you do have to you know, be careful that they don't get plugged with mycelium. All right, that was a long-winded video on aseptic technique and liquid culture. Um, I just wanted to point out, we still have these coffee mugs on our Etsy, so if you're interested, I've been rocking this same cup for five years, so all those coffee drinkers out there, definitely check out this coffee mug. It's really high quality and it reminds me of how much I love mushrooms. <laughs> All right. Um, also, we've got these hats on our Etsy this year. Um, we sold out of the camo limited edition, so shout out to everyone who got those. Maybe I'll see a mushroom hunting out in the wild. Um, those were awesome hats, so I had to order more. I got some gray ones now. I might add some different colors throughout the year. So subscribe to our channel if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of videos over the winter. And until next time, much love.